Uh, in this video, I want to teach you or give you an example of how you would uh, calculate the value of equity um, contribution for your project based on uh, basically a discounted value of the free cash flows to equity. Um, the first step in that, um, you know, of course, I've already moved over my headers. I've created this valuation sheet. Um, and I don't like working off of the financial sheet for these things, but it will be formula driven. But uh, the very first thing that I want to do is I want to put in a, a calculator for the number of years into the future that the cash flows occur so that we can use that to figure out how many periods we have to discount them back uh, to get their present value. Uh, obviously, the value of anything, as we talk about in our time value of money, is the sum of the present value of all the cash flows discounted back to present. So we first thing we know is how far back to discount them. So, um, obviously, in month zero, that is nothing. In month one, that is equal to the month zero plus one twelve. So I can just do that. Now I carry that out for the first year, and I'm effectively adding, um, you know, approximately, I'm adding a twelfth of a, of a year. Uh, every month and so by month 12 I'm at one year. Here I'm just going to go ahead and take that one year and add a year to it uh, and so now we're just adding years out to year 10. Uh, this is a way that you can basically do discounting of cash flows even though they are, aren't all for the same length period. Um, so that's a lot of times real useful when you're doing this kind of forecasting. Um, Next thing, obviously, that we want to do is go get the free cash flows to equity from the other page. Again, I'm doing this formula driven so that if we, for some reason, decide to uh, make a change on the other page, um, that uh, that will show up. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the, the formatting. Well, I'll just do it over here. I'm going to go ahead. I like a particular kind of formatting here. I like the currency formatting, but I like a custom version of it. Um, I like the one that goes red when it's negative and so it really stands out to you that it's negative. Uh, and so we're just going to pull that over. Now because I've just done that as a formula, those numbers will change whenever the uh, numbers on the financial statement pit change. So we're, we're now really building this as a tool, if you will. Um, it's something that we can use when um, you know, to, to see how these values change as we change the values in the other sheet. So I'm just getting rid of the zeros here. All right, so in order to do any discounting, we're going to need some cost of capital. In this case, we want the cost of equity. And I'm just going to assume a rate right now. It would be nice if I could spell equity as well. There we go. Um, we will talk at a later date about how you might determine a rate, but for now, remember, we're just building a tool, so we're going to assume that, and since it's an assumption, we're going to highlight it. And then we want to get the, uh, I like going through a step of getting the discount factor. Okay, This is the thing that you're going to multiply by your free cash flows in order to get the present value of those, uh, and that is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus whatever your rate is. Oh, don't know that's one. And we got a little dollar sign in front of that so it keeps carrying the rate over. Uh, discounted back at however many periods. So that factor is one there and it should be getting smaller and smaller over time. Drag it out. So that factor is what you're multiplying the cash flows by. So as an example, if we're out here in month eight, we're basically saying uh, in month eight, cash flows are only worth 91 cents on the dollar in present value terms. If we're out to year two, they're only worth 75 cents on the dollar. Year 10, they're only worth 25 cents on the dollar, basically. And so a, a dollar that I earn in year 10 is only worth about 25 cents today um, in terms of its present value. And that's what's implied by that. And you could see that as you change this discount rate up or down, those numbers will change, but we're going to leave it back at 15. So we've got the discount factor. So now what we want to do is we want to get the present value of the, uh, 
operating cash or the uh, free cash flows. And so that just becomes, it's equal to whatever the free cash flows are times the discount factor. It's very transparent that way. That's part of the reason why I like using that. Um, and so now you have those. What you don't have is the present value of the terminal value or the terminal payment. And so we got to go get that. And remember the terminal payment is the payment that we're going to get in your 10. And in our case, we know that that payment is going to um, increase over time um, by uh, 2% because uh, we've assumed an inflation factor. And so for us, we can get its value at year 10 is equal to the 10 year value divided by the discount rate minus 2%. Okay, and that's simply us treating it as a perpetuity. We've talked about that in class. And so this is an example of where you might use the perpetuity formula. Uh, it, you know, all that saying is assume that you get that amount and it grows into the future uh, by 2% and you're gonna discount it back. Now, that's its 10 year value. We need to discount it back 10 years. So one plus the discount rate to 10 years, and that becomes its new value. So in order to get the um, value of equity, we're simply going to say it's equal to the sum of the present values of all of these, right, all of the individual monthly cash flows, plus the present value of the terminal value. Boom. So it's 1.367, so million three hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars Now, one of the reasons why, I'm not going to highlight that in uh, I'm going to highlight in green so you can see it. I want to put it as yellow because I'm using yellow to show that that's a hard-coded number and this is formula driven. But you know, one of the things that you would do with that obviously is you might look at that value of equity and compare it to the amount of investment and equity investment you need, which is in my case about $93,000. So I'm asking for $93,000 the value to the investor if they were to get the rights to 100% of the free cash flows to equity is about 1.3 million. I don't want to sell something that is worth 1.3, 1.4 million for 90,000. That's a bad deal. So we'll talk at a later date about how you might adjust that. Um, but the bottom line is, is that you either are going to um, sell them a smaller portion of the project so that's possible that you, um, that you as the investor basically say, um, you know, for ninety two thousand dollars, you're you're only going to get a piece of the project, or and and I keep the rest of it, or you are going to um, go ahead and ask for the full one point three one point four million in return for giving that, and since you only need ninety two thousand. You put the rest of it in your pocket. You, that's that's your payment for coming up with this. So anyway, that is uh, the quick and easy way to do the um, value of equity. Hopefully that's useful for you.